Mayor, we have a presentation on the city performance report on our library services. Ms. Laura Garcia is going to present that. <clears throat> I do want to just rem remind the council and the public that <clears throat> part of what we're doing here, week after week, we have a presentation on one of our functions on what we call the city performance report. It's, it's um, a review at the city council that, uh, that really kind of summarizes a lot of the work that's happened in the city uh, administratively over the past several years where we have systematically gone through the city, identified our core mission, uh, established business plans to, uh, to work on those core missions, and we've established uh, uh, measurements to tell us how we're doing in terms of achieving that core mission. So these performance reports that you're receiving week by week, uh, at department by department, are a way of summarizing not only the work we do, but the structure and the process that we go about doing it. And I think if you, um, if you continue to pay attention to what you're receiving in these weekly reports, I think you're gonna be impressed with all the work that has been done across, across the enterprise in terms of how we've uh, approached managing the city. And, um, and, and I think substantial progress we've made with continuing to improve how our operations go. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Ms. Garcia. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council Members, Laura Garcia, Director of Libraries. I would like to start the review of our city's performance report for the library with our mission statement, which is to improve literacy, enhance knowledge, and create a sense of community by making information easily accessible to the public. If you'll notice under our operational profile that we are accredited by the Texas State Library, annually we submit a report to uh, the public library report to the Texas State Library and Archives Commission, and it's the results of that report which determines whether we meet accreditation standards. Our current accreditation is based on our 2012 fiscal year report, which we submitted to the state in March of 2013. Being accredited gives us the opportunity to provide our patrons with access to over 60 databases, which the state pays for, and that's a, a value of over $200,000. It also makes it possible for us to apply for competitive state grants from the Texas State Library. If you notice, we have six public library locations, the main library, Laura Thomas Central, plus five branches. Within that library system, we have 142 public computers, which have access to the internet as well as to software such as Word and PowerPoint. The library locations are also Wi-Fi hotspots and are utilized by individuals who have their own personal devices. Our physical locations consist of books, collections, excuse me, consist of books, magazines, books on CD, DVDs, and Blu-rays. The number we have here constantly changes as we add new material, as we withdraw material that has become outdated, worn, damaged, and as items go to lost status. The median age of our collection is over eight years old. The standard should be five years. As we continue to refine our CPR, we will be adding median age as one of our benchmarks. Now, the number of the e-collections is small in comparison to our physical collections, and that's because we're just starting to develop those collections. Those collections consist of e-books, e-audio, e-magazines, e-video, and e-music. In the coming months, we'll be adding e-readers that will have preloaded uh, titles on them for checkout. Now, I'd like to move over to the baseline information, and I'll be focusing on year 11-12, uh, as that's a year that we experienced several major changes and which impacted our services. <clears throat> as you notice, our staffing was reduced again from the previous year, and that caused us to have to eliminate reference, the reference and children's department at the main library. Some of you may have read the article on a study conducted by the Central Connecticut State University, which ranked Corpus Christi as the second least literate city in the nation. The understaffing of our library system was one of the factors that contributed to that ranking. Additionally, in August of 2011, we reduced hours of operation at our branches by 10 hours, and at the main library, we reduced it from 70 hours a week to 40 hours. 
Then again in September of that same year, the Greenwood Library, now known as the Bennett McDonald Library, closed for renovation and was not reopened until September of 2012. While our staffing continues to increase, our legal service area, which is our population, is steadily increasing. It's important to point this out because the Texas State Library uses population when calculating our maintenance of effort. The formula they use is the previous year, three-year average of our population and our expenditures. Meeting the maintenance of effort is required to be accredited. For the past two years, it has been a challenge for us to maintain our accreditation as we have failed to meet MOE. To retain our accreditation, we had to appear before the Library Systems Act Advisory Board in Austin to request a waiver. So although 11-12 was a difficult year for us, we feel that, that with our given staffing and our hours of operation, we are appearing to be stabilizing. Like, <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to move now to the mission elements. We have four mission elements within our department and several goals and measures and targets that we're um, using. Under mission element one, which is to provide material for personal enrichment and recreation, one of our goals is to increase utilization of library resources. One of the things that we're measuring is um, the in-house use of our materials. For whatever reasons, individuals choose not to check out materials, but it does show that our resources and facilities are being used, so we're keeping track of that. Under mission element number two, which is to participate in partnerships to promote literacy. One of our goals is to promote literacy and goodwill. And one of the things we're doing uh, currently is partnering with the, new the Neighborhood Centers of Corpus Christi and Oasis County, excuse me, County Community Action Agency Head Start Centers. And we're placing theme-related collections at these centers. Our target was to have five sites. We actually have had requests for 21. Mission element number th three is to create diverse, excuse me, diverse, enjoyable educational and literary programs. One of our goals is to provide programs to increase visitors and to use and use of library resources. One of uh, the targets is that we will have at least 1,000 children's programs with at least an attendance of 30,000. The last mission element is provide the community with digital inclusion technology or 21st century literacy. And one of our goals is to utilize the utilization of library technology. And of course, we're tracking the in-house use of those 142 computers. I do wanna say that although it may have sounded a little negative in 11-12, uh, that our library staff is very committed to making us the best library system in the state and I stand by for any questions. What is the majority of your revenues? Where do they come from? The general fund. Okay, can you come back up to, and I know that your expenditures went up because you explained as far as the need for <coughs> staffing, and, uh, but I see that your revenues went up. You were focusing on 11, 12, and your revenues, you project to go up. No, they did go up in 12 and 13. Can you help me understand uh, what that increase came from? Did you so all track you, that? You're saying the revenues or you're it saying? It says baseline information. Uh -huh. and you see where it says total revenues? Okay, we're not a revenue generating department. So basically those are from any overdue fines and things of that nature, copies and so oh, forth. Oh, I see. So it's just whatever pass, whatever. Through, pass through costs and whatever yes. policies. Yes. that we have in place. Yes, and that's why it's not a very big number, if you notice. I see. I'm with you. That helps me understand that better. Yes. Thank you. Are there any potential revenue streams that we could realize with new technologies at the library? Well, it's kind of a difficult thing for public libraries because we tend to offer our services for free, mm -hmm. and that's one of the, the principles of a public library is to offer free services. Uh, we have looked at some things. If you notice, one of our um, under technology, digital inclusion, we do have our local history collection and we've digitized that collection. Um, a lot of 
researchers use that material in books, even locally. You've probably seen some of our pictures that are there. But we tend to provide that service to the public for free. If they want something, uh, a scanned image, we basically, when they're doing research, they request it and we provide it for free. So that could be a resource, but like I said, for us, it's basically we've provided for free. Individuals can go to our public library website and see that online. Yeah, well, I understand the fundamental notion. God knows it's a great and yes. valuable asset that we have for the community. Ms. McIntyre? Thank you. I just, <clears throat> sorry, I just have a couple questions. I, I contribute to those revenue sources. Those due dates are just <laughs> kind of flexible in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Although I, they're yeah. guidelines. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of a tricky concept. You can renew online. You, you can, can call I, us to renew. I, well, and that's where I wanted to go. It's wonderful. You get online to renew your book, and that's where you find out about some of those fabulous e-readers and and a lot of the services that you provide that are, are what people don't generally think of for libraries. And it's mm -hmm. a really wonderful asset. And, and I've found, I'm, I'm a math geek, so uh, algebra books and algebra <coughs> lessons and calculus things, uh, and a lot of e-readers for books and even videos. And so I think it's wonderful. And, and I don't think enough people know about the, these yes, services. Yes, unfortunately, one of the things that we are, or fortunately, one of the things that we are trying to work with is promoting library services. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many things, I think usually people think of library and they still just picture a book. Mm -hmm whereas they don't realize all the resources and programs and so forth that we do offer. So what, what kind of outreach are we doing on letting people know all of the wonderful things you do? Well, we do outreach to uh, schools, and um, usually we try to attend when there's programs for parents. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is we have invited uh, the CCISD librarians. We've gone out and we've done presentations to them as a group and to all the campuses as a group and uh, trying to promote that way. And of course, we do have, which mm -hmm. Michelle here is the, the branch manager at the Neelan branch, which is one of our most popular branches. Uh, we do have material, and we did bring it today, just to um, pass it out if it's allowed. Um, on some of the resources, we try to give out information. We have our website, we have Facebook, and so forth. Do the schools bring field trips to the libraries very often? They do, but unfortunately, th their cuts, um, they have many, they've had many cuts where they don't provide uh, funding for transportation. We still okay. get some, but it's difficult for them to come. And what, what about, I know there used to be bookmobiles, and I don't know if that's related to the library or elsewhere, but do you guys go, do you take the library places? Well, we go, like I said, out to the community when we're invited. We try to do events if they're offered to us for free. Mm -hmm. So um, we do go out into the community. Now, For as a bookmobile, we don't, but the satellite collection is kind of that concept okay. because we're going to the centers and providing collections for them to use, and they're theme-related so that mm -hmm. when the... Uh, the employees there read to the children using those, and they go along with their curriculum units and so forth. Which is another great thing with the, the online, because even if you live near one library, you can request a book from Yes, library. we do transfer material if you're at the Janative Heart Library in Flower Bluff, and you happen to one an item that's at the Hopkins Library out in Northwest. We do provide delivery services to that branch for individuals to pick up. Which is great. Um, so. I mentioned this on Parks and Rec, and I'm just going to mention it to you again. Every one of our libraries is closed on Sunday, and most of our residents have a day off on Sunday. Uh, have we looked at picking a library and saying, hey, we're going to be open, you know, like Nayla not Library, where my mm -hmm. kids grew up with Michelle reading to, the, to her, to them, um, to, that we're going to be open on Sunday and closed a different day instead, not even, not increasing hours even necessarily, but shifting them so that we can service uh, an entire section of our community. We have... Ha <coughs> Excuse me, we have had that discussion and we are working on that to send a plan to Mr. Olson regarding that. Right, and, and I've noticed some cities are starting to, you know, Barnes & Noble is your competition. Yes. Because you can have a chai while looking at books. Well, we're working on that. Um, it's not a cafe because unfortunately we would not be able to staff it. We did go uh, to the Valley to look at some of the libraries and they actually have cafes, restaurants. Mm -hmm. However, Within maybe the next two months, we will be having vending machines only for starters at the Laura Thomas Central Library because that's our bigger location. But we'll start having some vending machines just to try it out gradually 
and then we'll see what we can do at our branches. Have, have we thought about leasing the space to a vendor instead of <coughs> instead of staffing it ourselves? Yes, uh, the only issue we had there is having the space to lease. Okay. At our branches, there, there, right. there's not a sufficient space. At the main library, perhaps, but we've kind of looked at that and looked at what it, what it would entail, and so far we haven't been able to identify a space that we feel that we can give up. That you can give up. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. That's where I get some of my emails, especially how beautiful it is with the Blucher Park. Yes. And even though you may not have the space, but you have an outdoor area. Yes. And maybe to have a pilot program with the idea of the cafe on an outdoor, I know it's always going to be weather related, but <clears throat> in the good weather, boy, there's just seasonal businesses that will just be there in that weather time that can make some really good additional revenue source. <laughs> anyway, just an idea, but I thought that was really intriguing when someone brought that to my attention. Mr. Loeb? I want to uh, thank you for the uh, presentation. Um, the, the, the mobile library or the uh, satellite library was really intriguing to me, and uh, I, I hope that as you, as you get experience with that, you look at some other opportunities, maybe in our senior centers and in other places in our community where you can uh, put those branches. I know I know some of them have kind of informal um, uh, kind of book exchanges, but uh, it would be good to see what we can do on, on getting access to the, to the whole system because I think that's, you know, I, libraries are changing a lot uh, and there's a, a, a lot of change in how people uh, consume books and uh, but I, I think the, the other thing that a lot of people don't realize is that uh, libraries or computer labs are ways for a lot of citizens who can't afford to have their own computer at home or have internet access at home to have a place where they can use the internet and use a computer. And so uh, that's a really important function as well that I, I think a lot of people kind of uh, overlook. And I, I think that's, uh, I, I agree with Councilwoman McIntyre that we, we do need to work on hours because um, uh, I know we, we did some cuts in hours where we were thinking, well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt too bad, but you can see in the numbers that it, it damaged how much people are able to access our libraries. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see in our budget process if, uh, if we can find a way um, to uh, get better hours uh, back, to get more people back using the library, because uh, a lot of the costs are fixed. Um, you know, books cost the same amount, but if people can't access the system to be able to to get the books, then you know, what's the point? So I, I uh, I'd really like to encourage you all and the city manager to to work on some options for us to look at and see what we can do. Uh, this year and in future years to build back up to where we were before and hopefully go beyond it. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about the e-collection. Uh, yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, it, it's fascinating to me uh, having access to the technology myself, how much free, how, how many public domain books there are, you know, yes. how, how many of the classics are public domain mm -hmm. and finding ways for uh, citizens who don't have access to that technology to be able to get access to it uh, through our library system is uh, is, is wonderful. I think it's a, a great service. You know, my uh, uh, my family members use it often. Uh, grandparents are there every week, uh, getting something or returning something. They they take their uh, books back on time though. They're very good <laughs> about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they read quickly. But uh, I thank you for running this system it's a it's a wonderful thing for our community thank you and I appreciate the progressive and inno innovativeness that you're doing and the changes that the libraries have gone through in technology I'll tell you I was at the Neyland library it used to be called the Parkdale library and I grew yes. up the majority of my life with Parkdale library in the summer reading programs and I'll never forget when I was a little girl my library card the day that I got that it was like my first charge card you know and that was the most <coughs> I felt like I hit the mother load you know the lottery so um, let me make a distinction about also there's libraries and you go into Greenwood and some of the more of the some of 
frankly, where you have the low income areas yes. and the computers are always the, fir they're the first ones that are being utilized. And there's sometimes lines for some of those. So there's a huge value that we have with the service that we have in our, our libraries. And I want to make the distinction also, I don't think we should have a cafe inside Blucher Park. That's our bird sanctuary <laughs> in a fallout area. Mm -hmm. But it's so beautiful. I mean, there's so many areas. I hope we do look at some innovative ways maybe to partner up in some revenue streams, but also that will be a real quality of life, especially a cafe atmosphere. And actually, uh, where we're planning to place like the tables near the vending machines is overlooking Blucher Park because oh, we do nice. we agree with that that that's one of the things that we have. And I also want to mention that because we do value our children so much, they actually get special uh, library cards that have three wonderful designs. Whereas unfortunately, we as the adults kind of get the blow one, you know, kind of <laughs> dull. But there's we did that was a project that we did to promote services to children also and get them interested in having their own. Uh, credit card, so to speak. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty exciting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Don't see any other comments? Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Tell your team that we really appreciate all their work. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Olson? Uh, not under this section, Mayor. I'm done with that uh, city manager presentation issue.